Hello guys, and welcome to the Uncommon Sense Show. Uh, this is Randall, and I wanted to share with you today some information on Comfrey. There's a lot of misinformation on the internet about Comfrey, and most likely, if you've heard about it, you've heard negative things. But is that necessarily the truth? Well, I stumbled upon this article, and it prompted me to do this video. So I want to share with you some of the facts, because sometimes... Articles like this are poorly researched, and the research they do show is very biased and unreliable. And I'm going to show you why that is the case. I want you to know a couple different things from this article before we actually go into the actual footnotes and the research and delve into that. First of all, it talks about the pyrolycidine alkaloids being very toxic to the liver and carcinogenic. What's important to understand here is this is, not, this is mostly true. However, it's not always true in every instance. For instance, it's not true in every mammal, and it's not true to the same extent in every mammal. Also, it's important to understand that pyrolycidine alkaloids that have been extracted from the plant itself and purified are extremely toxic, whereas in the plant, that has not necessarily been proven, and in most cases, it has been proven to not be toxic. So there are many elements that when extracted from the plant can be very toxic to different areas of your body. That is why it's important not to mess with nature. But let's get, let's delve into the actual footnotes. I'm not here to bash anybody, but this is a poorly researched article. This person should have done a better job of actually looking at everything because there are other, other research to look at. So at the bottom of her article, she does have footnotes, which I commend her for. Footnotes are awesome. So let's kind of look over these and um, see what the actual research is saying. So this is the first uh, research article that is referenced. It's important to understand right off the bat that they're talking about Ritalin, which is a pyrolycidine alkaloid. It's not comfrey. Now, pyrolycidine alkaloids are in comfrey, but they are in a group of alkaloids. They're in a plant that nature has created in such a way that is beneficial, in my belief. And when you extract that out, it is not necessarily a good thing. So this is Ritalin. It's not comfrey. It's important to understand this is not about comfrey at all. And we cannot use it as about comfrey. A couple interesting points just wanted to make before we move on here. They talk about um, it was found to be carcinogenic in male and female rats and male mice, but not female mice. It's interesting that they chose rats for the research that we're going to be looking at here. More specifically, GMO rats. If you understand the significance of this, mice are actually more resilient to pyrolycidine alkaloids. It's their, they have an ability to resist it more effectively than rats. And not only do rats have less of that ability, but GMO rats have even less of that ability. So it's interesting that they use rats, but they use big blue rats, GMO rats. These are rats with um, DNA that's been messed with. They could alter the actuality, the, the facts of the study, but that is not mentioned. This is the next uh, article that's on the reference and this is the mutagenicity of comfrey in rat liver. Interestingly enough, again, these are big blue rat models, and they're transgenic, which basically means their DNA has been messed with. These are genetically modified rats, if you will. These are not regular rats. So the effect that something, any toxin, anything, could have on these rats may be very different from the same family that the DNA has not been messed with. So I kind of have a problem with that. Why are we using big blue rats? Why are we using rats that are transgenic, that are not your everyday rat? I mean, it doesn't make sense. And why aren't we using mice? Is it possible because mice respond better to it and that isn't the result that these researchers wanted now i'm not trying to just make a big conspiracy here but there is a lot of research that is funded by organizations by people who do not necessarily have a 
interest in truth and facts, but rather furthering their degree. The acknowledgments this research was par partly supported by an appointment to the postgraduate research program. So there was a incentive here. Somebody did get a benefit here. That's important to understand. Does that necessarily mean the research is bogus? No, but it does mean that we should have our eyes open. It is important to understand that they contradict themselves in this research article, which is a poor way to submit a research article. They say comfrey is a rat liver toxin and carcinogen that has been used as a vegetable and herbal remedy by humans. So they say it's a carcinogen. Then they say, although there are no epidemiological data regarding the carcinogenicity of comfrey, these adverse effects have raised questions of its potential carcinogenicity in humans. So to break this basically down, I, on one step they're saying comfrey is a carcinogen. And they're using these rats to prove that. And to be fair, they're saying it's a rat liver toxin and carcinogen. But they are insinuating that it is a carcinogen across the board. But when you break it down to the actual facts, they're saying there is actually no epidemiological data that proves this. So the fact that there are literally hundreds of thousands of people using comfrey, humans using it, and there's not an incidence rate that should correspond with the supposed carcinogenic or liver toxic perceived effect of comfrey. So when it all boils down to it, is it really a liver toxin? as a plant and is it really carcinogenic as a plant or is it only liver toxin and carcinogenic as a pure PA uh, pyrolysidine uh, alkaloid or to genetically modified rats or even a regular rat but that doesn't mean that it is carcinogenic or toxin to any other mammal, including the horse, which is what this article was specifically about, is horses. Another important point that I would like to make is that a lot of these studies do diets where it's 2, 4, or 8% of the diet is comfrey. That is a significant portion of the diet. And you also have to understand mixing different ingredients with other ingredients can create and produce a result that would not have taken place in a different environment. So the next reference that is actually on her article is The Efficacy and Safety of Comfrey uh, by Stickle Sites. And reference from that article, that research piece, which is basically um, insinuating that comfrey should not be used, is this piece, which is from November 2002, Trends in Pharmacological Sciences in Comfrey Toxicity Revisited. This is very interesting. I think I feel like it's a very well put together piece. It's not pro comfrey, but it's definitely not against comfrey. It's just kind of looking at the facts. And I kind of like their perspective. I'm going to kind of go over it because this is not a article that is available to the public. So I'm going to kind of go over it more than I would an article that you guys can see very easily. Comfrey is an herbal medicine with history of efficacious use in humans. However, owing to the presence in comfrey of pyrrolicidine alkalides, PAEs, which are compounds known to be hepatotoxic, many countries have restricted its availability. This review emphasizes crucial aspects of PA toxicity and suggests that comfrey might not be as dangerous to humans as current restrictions indicate important part to look at. It talks about typical daily doses, the leaf ranging from 5 to 30 grams. Daily doses are usually much lower, which is true. Comparing to some of these outrageous studies where they're doing 8, 16, and even half of the diet in comfrey, if you eat half your diet or 8% or 10% of your diet in any specific plant, it may produce reactions or certain phenomena they won't happen if you're only eating a small portion of that plant. Important to understand that. Doesn't mean that the plant is bad, it just may mean that you shouldn't have that much of it in your diet. 
they explain some of the applications, wound healing, inflammation, and the vitamins and minerals in comfrey. Then they talk about comfrey is restricted in a number of countries. Um, the USA did restrict it completely at one time. Now it's kind of a voluntary basis where they basically uh, diss it, but if you want to use it, you know, use it at your own risk. Uh, other countries, the UK and Canada and Germany, have restricted it as well. This is an interesting part here, though. One might expect that new toxicity research or an unacceptable number of adverse reactions prompted these recent actions, but neither is the case, and this is true. The most recent original research regarding comfrey toxicity was actually published in the early 1990s. Now, this article was published in 2002. There have been a few more since. There was one in 2005. But even those, most of the time, they're referencing old research. So most of the time, it's not even new. It's important to understand that. More, research re more recent research has been designed to examine the therapeutic actions of comfrey. Indeed, there's limited evidence to support anti-inflammatory, wound healing, and immune modulating effects. So this article is definitely not pro-comfrey, although I disagree with this statement. I appreciate it because they're looking at the research and they're saying we don't see it. Uh, so you can't take this article and say that these guys are trying to promote comfrey. They obviously are not. They're trying to promote facts. And that's what I appreciate. Human toxicity reports, although there have been no recent reports or adverse reactions to comfrey, over a decade ago, several cases of venal occlusive disease associated with comfrey ingestion were reported. It's important to understand this is a... Uh, coupling two things together. These case studies support the underlying illness, nutritional status, and the concurrent use. Hepatotoxic drugs increase the likelihood of VOD development when using PAA-containing drugs. So basically, concurrent use of comfrey with certain medication could produce an effect that would not happen with just using comfrey. This is interesting. It says, although this, is, although this cohort is too small to ascertain risk, it is interesting that AST, GGT, bilirubin, and AFP were considered normal even after prolonged consumption of comfrey leaf up to 25 grams a day for 1 to 30 years. And I also appreciate this, that they mentioned that the conclusion that comfrey is not safe is based on purified uh, PAs which were administered to rodents. Systematic toxicity testing or clinical trials have not been performed. Although pH poisoning in humans can occur, this is most commonly a consequence of consumption of plants other than comfrey, which is something that's not mentioned in the research. Heavy reliance on data obtained from experiments conducted using rodents or from human poisoning by other plants is probably not an accurate reflection of the risk or th therapeutic benefit of comfrey in humans. Now, we were talking about pets and horses. The point is that across the board, there is this negative perspective that comfrey is a risk, that it is poisonous to our liver and just will destroy your liver. And there is no facts or basis behind that. It is based on a few accounts over a period of 100 years, or you could even say hundreds of years, but over a period of 100 years several accounts of people dying and you look at those accounts and you find there were other things going on for instance there was a case of someone who died and it was linked to comfrey well when they did the research they found out it was an asthmatic who smoked comfrey now i don't know about you but i think there's a lot of plants if you smoke them you're going to be in trouble especially if you're an asthmatic i wouldn't exactly take that as confirmation that his comfrey is bad so you have to actually look at the stories rather than just accept because there's a lot of misinformation even in research articles this is also an interesting part it says not all pas have similar toxicity in the liver pas are transformed to pyrroles by mixed function oxidases pyrroles exert their toxic effect by reacting with the binding to cellular macro molecules including proteins and dna and we just talked about a little while ago they use big blue rats, which have been DNA manipulated. So pyrroles are binding to DNA and proteins. 
So depending on the diet and the type of proteins being um, absorbed by these animals, and if their DNA has been manipulated, it very well could alter how these PAs interact with the body. It goes back to what my original point is, that messing with DNA and messing with the body, whether it's a human body or an animal body, is very dangerous. And we do not know how the long-term effects are of those messing around. So I would tend to fault those that are messing around with DNA rather than comfrey, which is a natural plant that has been used for decades and centuries to be beneficial and helpful to the body. I thought this was an interesting uh, chart here. It talks about the different toxicity levels uh, for PA in animals. Interestingly enough, pigs seem to be on the lower end. They seem to be more susceptible to poisoning. So pigs, chickens, and cows. Rats are higher, horses are lower. But you also have to count for horses are much larger animals. So 2% body weight of a horse would be, you could average about 20 pounds, something like that, depending on the size of the horse. Whereas 2% for a rat is going to be much smaller. So you have to understand that the size of the animal um, plays a role. You're not going to feed 20 pounds of comfrey to a horse. You shouldn't. That's an excessive amount. And that's missed when you're just using percentages. So you're saying, well, we fed 2% to the animal. Well, you missed the point. If you're feeding 20 pounds of comfrey to a horse, that is a ton. And I would expect at that level, there might be some adverse reactions. But if your horse has some bone issue and you're trying to heal that issue, you feed it some comfrey for a few weeks. I do not see that as a problem. I don't think there's any data that suggests that would be a problem. And there's actually much data to support that it is highly effective. Interestingly enough, the gerbils seem to be the super animals here, which could consume 3,640% theoretically of their body's weight in. Um, this isn't comfrey, or, but it's another plant which has PAs in it, which actually does have research showing um, toxicity, whereas comfrey is suspect. The, the, the research around comfrey is suspect, whereas this one actually does have some. That's why they chose it. But gerbils are pretty resistant, so if you want to feed gerbils comfrey, apparently there is, they can take a lot of it, or another plant with PAs in it. A few interesting points from the article, and again, I wish you guys could read this, but it's not a public article, which is interesting to me that a lot of the research that disproves faulty research, you have to pay for, the faulty research is public. I don't think that's on accident. It, this few interesting points, it says, additionally, the route of administration can dramatically affect the toxic response. Very true. For example, rabbits are relatively resistant to chronic feeding of Sinentio, but are killed by a single injection of the purified alkaloids. And there's been a number of studies where they inject certain plant extracts into animals, and they're like, well, it killed them, or it ruined their liver. Well, no duh. You just injected a extracted purified substance that the body can't handle. What are you clueless? I mean that just doesn't make any sense. These animals are used to eating a plant and breaking down the components of the plant and then expelling what they don't need. And here you're just injecting it straight into their bloodstream. It's very logical to assume that it's not going to go well. Doesn't make any sense but we continue to do it as if Someday it's going to make some sense and we're going to just find something revolutionary here. We need to stop trying to extract plant chemicals and inject them into animals and humans and assume that it is going to be the same result as if those animals and humans ate the plant. It's nonsensical, it's outrageous, it's ridiculous. It talks about the sensitivity of different species. Chickens and other sensitive species also show no ill effect when fed comfrey. And we just noticed that lethal doses, about 5% of their body weight, 
uh, for this other flower uh, herb, uh, Synengio. By contrast, rats appear to be sensitive to PAs in comfrey. Indeed, when rats consume high levels of comfrey or are injected with purified comfrey PAs, they develop liver cancer, and it quotes that same, or liver tumors, and it quotes that same research uh, study we just talked about with the blue rats. Rats might not be an appropriate human model because their hepatic response, or hepatic response to PA seems to differ from the human response. So it's not always okay to use rats or mice to show what would happen in a human because our bodies are different. So it's a starting point, it's a stepping stone, and it can be beneficial to learn how they might react, but it doesn't necessarily mean that is the same in humans or in other animals. And to just make that conclusion or assumption is ridiculous, and it's not right. There's a lot of important information in this article, and if anyone wants this, if you write me, I'll try and get you a copy of this, if I can do that. But it talks about the common uh, comfrey, which is what has been used for centuries, as opposed to the Russian comfrey, which is what some of these studies have used. The Russian comfrey is not the same. It has a higher proportion of T more toxic PAs, um, it's not true to the original form. But about 85 to 97% of the PAs in comfrey, the common comfrey, are actually, uh, the PAs can be broken down very readily in the body. For the most part, this is what they're talking about. Whereas that may not be true of hybrid species. So not all comfries may be the same. So that's an important point to look at as well. You should be getting the uh, common comfrey, the original, you know, the one that nature has produced, not that man has made. Just a couple concluding remarks here. It talks on the study. Uh, the formation of PA toxic metabolites is attenuated by concurrent administration of sulfur containing amino acids such as methionine, or cystine. Indeed, diets low in protein enhance the toxic effects of PAs. Fortunately, dry comfrey leaf is rich in protein and sulfur-containing amino acids. Those are important points. If you take and extract the PAs out of it, you don't have the whole picture. You don't have the, P the protein. You don't have uh, the sulfur. You don't have any of the amino acids, or any of the structure of the plant, which has a protective effect or a disabling effect on the toxic elements of PAs. That's an important part to look at. So they, t they mentioned that PAs probably overstate the health risk associated with administration of crude comfrey extracts or ingestion of the whole plant. So it's saying even comfrey extracts are not the same as purified PAs, and we can't treat them the same. So a lot of these research articles are poorly researched because they're taking a toxic element out of a plant when inside the plant it is probably not as toxic, if toxic at all, in normal everyday use. So yeah, if you're changing your whole diet to 50% comfrey, you might have issues. But if you're using it wisely, you're using it as a medicinal herb when it's needed, the research does not suggest it's a poison. It does not suggest it's dangerous. It does not suggest it is in the least bit dangerous to your liver. Rather, PAs are extracted from the plant. Again, we need to stop associating what science takes out of a plant as the same action within the plant. The last part of the study before we move on, it says research to date has often been flawed by the use of inappropriate animal models I just talked about that. Big blue rats, which are GMO. DNA manipulated rats should not have been used. Faulty experimental design. Correct botanical identification and analysis of the plant material for PA content profile is essential. In addition, animal species vary widely in their susceptibility to PA toxicity, and the toxic response is dependent on the specific PA. Therefore, it seems imperative that toxicity testing be conducted in several animal species rather than just uh, DNA manipulated rats. Perhaps the most direct approach to assessing the benefits and attendant risks of the therapeutic action 
and use of Comfrey would be to screen the current population of Comfrey users. Might be a wise thing to do. So that kind of summarizes a lot of the information that we have on Comfrey in this article. This research article actually does a really good job of summarizing everything. It doesn't go pro-Comfrey, it doesn't go anti-Comfrey, it just summarizes the facts. We don't have enough information to claim that it is poisonous or toxic in any level other than to DNA manipulated rats. Okay, so if you want to say DNA manipulated rats are susceptible to liver poisoning by Comfrey or definitely by PAs, you have my support. If you're going to say that a 1100 pound horse is susceptible to liver poisoning because you manipulate the DNA of a rat and then fed it a extract purified PA and gave it liver disease, I'm not going to buy that. So we need to be use our brains when we're looking at research. We need to use our brains when we're researching. That doesn't even make any sense. And if you look at the research, almost all of it is done on rats. Not all of it is DNA manipulated rats. Most of it is. So you need to look at that. As this research article brought out, it's a faulty way to do research. So it's not a correct model. We need to change that. But the point is that so far, there is no evidence to support this all-out war against Comfrey as something that we should avoid. Definitely not at all. If you look at a animal like a horse in a pasture, when a horse is maimed or they have some injury to their leg or a wound, they will seek out Comfrey and eat it. They will seek out red clover for uh, that issue as well as blood issues. Horses tend to seek out herbs and plants to fill either a nutrient need or to heal a certain problem that they're going through. They know how much to eat and when to stop. And there are no studies that I could find that showed any horses dying from overdosing on Comfrey. I don't believe there are any. I don't know of any in humans. Horses, I do not believe it's true. Um, I believe that wise use, medicinal use of Comfrey in your animals, especially in horses, can be very therapeutic and can be very beneficial, especially in bone issues. It has an extreme healing ability. And if you use it as a plant, you use it wisely and you do not use it too much. Don't feed them 20 pounds of comfrey. They don't need 20 pounds of comfrey. Um, and if you use it externally in a small doses internally, there are no studies or research that shows that that is a negative. I want to wrap this up because we are running out of time here, but I will be doing a part two discussing some of the other studies that have been done on comfrey as well as some historical references, historical uses, and medicinal uses of comfrey. If you appreciated this video and the fact that we looked at different research and showed you uh, the facts, there are more facts to show and we will get to them, but if you appreciated that we are showing you the facts, if you'd go ahead and give this video a like and hit the subscribe button. And as well, comment below and tell us what you thought of the video, or if you have any questions regarding comfrey or a med other medicinal herb, we would be happy to answer those for you. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Please uh, like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends, family, and your enemies so we can spread the word that comfrey may not be the evil herb that people think it is. It, in fact, may be very healing. Again, we will be coming out with a part two talking about the medicinal uses of comfrey. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and take care.